comedian. Uh, I like him despite the fact that he's a Red Sox fan. Uh, everybody give it up for Mr. Roy Rogers. How the fuck am I gonna follow segregation jokes? <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'll try. I will try. Uh, so about once every three months on my commute to work, I see the same sight. And it's a Caritas bus in a church that's letting off homeless people and picking up homeless people. And then it just drives away. And uh, based on what I've seen, I think I understand what it is now. And it's just a, a, a trap and release program for homeless people. <laughs> but I think they're like tagging their ears and tracking their migration patterns, their mating habits. They're trying to, I think the Christians are trying to find out what homeless people do. I don't know. All right, moving on. <laughs> so I woke up this morning to the most annoying sound in the world, like four different birds chirping, and they each had like a separate different chirp, but they repeated it over and over, and it reminded me of those annoying, out of control teenage girls on the Maury Povich show. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Uh-uh! 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 I do what I want! I do what I want! I do what I want! It's my body! It's my body! It's my body! That and the birds were selling their bodies for money and uh, doing drugs. And I think if I really wanted him to stop, I could just hire an intimidating black guy who wore camo and just yelled at him for an hour <laughs> until they cried and promised to stop hitting their moms. <laughs> oh, man. So I get rejected a lot by women. And I'm not, I'm not really sure why. So I'm going to start handing out surveys after I get rejected. I'm going to call it a rejection error. And uh, some of the questions are, as follows. Question one. On a scale of nine to ten, how creepy did I come off? Fourteen, god damn. Question two. If I had made fewer than three Robocop references throughout the evening, would that have helped? Thanks, Dave. Question three. On a scale of one to ten, why won't you give me your phone number? <laughs> oh, man. So I, I just recently bought a new car, and it's, it's pretty awesome. I love it uh, because it doesn't break down every five seconds. And uh, it also does this other thing. It helps me get girls' phone numbers. Yeah, all you have to do is just hit a girl from behind. <laughs> And you exchange phone numbers, it's great. I'm just a little worried that if I call her, she's gonna be like, oh God, my neck, you shouldn't have called. Because she doesn't want to talk to me. And the premiums are fucking ridiculous, let's face it. Uh, so I've always kind of been a wonder kid at school. Like I just sleep through all my classes and just ace them. And uh, it even happened in preschool. Like I, you know, skinny marinky dinks, I was fucking awesome. I aced everything, except I failed skipping. No, I don't think you understand. I failed skipping. I could not skip in preschool. And I was devastated. But now that I'm looking back on it, I'm kind of excited I failed skipping, because that just means I found out I wasn't gay in preschool. Yeah. So, uh, who here smokes pot? Most of you. All right. Very cool. Let me ask you this. Have you guys ever been so high that you had to find an alternate route to the kitchen? Because there was a beam of sunlight coming through and you were afraid that you were going to trip over it or break it? Yeah. What should have been a 10-step trip into the kitchen has now turned into Indiana Stone in the quest for the Golden Twinkie. 
My favorite activity when I'm high is to uh, just like get really, really high and camp out on the roof of my house with my laptop, with Google Maps coordinated right onto the roof. And I just pull down my pants and I moon the satellite. And I just hit refresh every five seconds until I see my ass on Google Maps. It's up there for like an entire week. And no one called the cops. Thanks a lot, friends. I was a missing persons. To everyone but Google Maps. I'm Roy Rogers, that's my time. All right, let's fix this. Guys, uh, this next guy needs no introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the professor, Mr. Chris Martin. Chris Martin. <laughs> Big oil is spilled in the Gulf of Mexico. I finally figured out what BP stands for. Brock's problem. <laughs> Apparently my plan to cap the well with Sarah Palin is not practical. It's the biggest oil slick to hit Louisiana since Little Richard's hair. Can't wait for the oil batter, shrimp specials, and red lobster. So there's a shocking new book by Kitty Kelly out on Oprah Winfrey. I don't have any problem with Oprah Winfrey and Gail King. However, I do draw the line at Oprah Winfrey and John Tesh. That's just wrong and unnatural. But too soon? I can forgive Steven Seagal for having sex slaves. However, I'm still working on not having a grudge for Black Dawn. Pistol whipped. Urban justice. Forced to kill and not to mention his entire musical career. So they have, uh, you can now get Avatar sheet cakes and cupcakes at Kroger. I'm so glad that director James Cameron decided not to trivialize his movie's message about the evils of predatory capitalism. Oh, that one died. That's flatter than a cupcake. So, I, time tra I traveled in a I traveled in a hot tub time machine, and all I got was a lousy Morlock and a rash. <laughs> Has anyone bought an iPad yet? Progress, technology. It used to be you could replicate the experience of a $10 transistor radio with a $1,000 PC and streaming audio. Now you can duplicate the experience of a $20 book with a $500 iPad in the iBook store. And if you have a dog or cat, you can duplicate the experience of a $5 chew toy. Man, I gotta stop channeling Andy Rooney. So KSC has a new sandwich called the Double Down. It's cheese, mayonnaise, bacon between two slabs of fried chicken. Would you like fries or a defibrillator with that? CIA Director Leon Panetta says we're making progress against Al-Qaeda. No word on whether that's going to have any effect on the running bet between Fidel Castro and Osama bin Laden as to which one is going to die in bed first. So we had a mining disaster in West Virginia claimed the lives of 29 people. It's refreshing to have a Richmond company killing people with something other than tobacco. <laughs> The U.S. Treasury Department has redesigned the $100 bill. One innovation, they come pre-folded, which makes for easier insertion into the G-strings of strippers. <laughs> That's why we write it on the hand, people. Okay, Jace, uh, Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. For years, I thought that one of the Jonas Brothers was the Antichrist. And it's really tough to have to adjust to the possibility that it might actually be Justin Bieber. Kim Kardashian says she has Bieber fever, Bieber fever, which is terrible because I thought she just had herpes. <laughs> so I'm really bored, I'm really tired of those you might be a redneck jokes, I'm starting a new riff, a new meme. 
You might be a Hooters waitress. You might be a Hooters waitress if you have large breasts and wear orange shorts. You might be a Hooters waitress if you have large breasts and serve chicken wings. Okay, it was meta when I wrote it. <laughs> so, we're not really confronting the real issues that face America in the 21st century. For example, we know that the Wu-Tangs have a clan, but what about the Ting-Tings? <laughs> I wrote some Yo Mama jokes. Did everybody have a great Mother's Day? <laughs> <laughs> Yo mama's so fat, she trampled Kirstie Alley in the buffet line at Golden Corral. Yo mama's so fat, she thinks the early bird special is a gathering of vultures. Yo mama's so fat, she broke the string on her yo-yo diet. Yo mama's so fat, she's being towed out into the Gulf of Mexico and lowered onto the BP oil well spill out. Your mom is so fat, the final episode of Lost reveals that she is the island. <laughs> Your mom is so fat and ugly that there's no room in the alphabet for the letter F, so now she's guggly instead of fugly. Your mom is so ugly, Neanderthals refuse to mate with her ancestors. Your mom is so ugly, Catholic priests refused to molest her when she was a child. Your mom is so ugly, Sarah Palin thought she was a moose and shot her. Your mom is so ugly, Dick Cheney shot her in the face and improved her looks. Your mom is so ugly, uh, your mom has so many STDs, she now has an entire wing at the Center for Disease Control. My name is Chris Martin and that's my time. Thank you very much. Alright guys, it is the uh, one year anniversary night tonight, and uh, the next guy that I am bringing up is the uh, reason that this all goes down. Uh, I want to start a bit, we're going to start with like a golf clap, I think, for yeah. this, alright? Yeah. So we're going to start slow. Everyone, please give it up for Mr. Joe Hatsy! Yeah. Take his high life away. Hey guys, how are you? Decent? Cool. Thanks for being here. This is fun. Uh, I go to VCU, which is awesome. Um, except recently they've started putting these signs in the bathroom uh, above the urinals. And these signs, they say, uh, VCU students are a lot healthier than you'd think. 95% have never let drinking get in the way of their studies. 93% have never smoked a cigarette. 90% haven't had a drink in the past week. And those annoy me because, first of all, bullshit. <laughs> and second of all, I want one with my statistic on it. 1% uh, of ECU students are 25-year-old perennial undergraduates who'd probably do cocaine with you if you gave it to them for free. <laughs> And then what's weird is you turn around and uh, there's a diaper changing station and there are instructions in braille. Like, unless that sign reads, uh, congratulations, we know you had to touch a lot of wet, cold, oddly shaped objects to find your way here, but you made it. I think it's being redundant. <laughs> uh, I got my car towed recently. And uh, I was talking to a friend about it, and uh, you know, I was bitching, and he, uh, he stopped me in the middle of my story, and he goes, dude, welcome to the real world. And I was like, uh, thanks, seriously, thank you, you self-indulgent, world-weary sage. Tell me more about this real world. I've been off in Sharpie Sniff Cupcake Land. <laughs> Where we huff markers and sleep on, sleep on cupcakes. Are there flying machines and robots and lanterns that turn on at the flick of a switch? 
<laughs> this guy does it about like really mundane shit sometimes too. He's like, welcome to drinking at one in the afternoon on a Tuesday. And I'm like, welcome to alcoholism, you prick. <laughs> Blake's behind me. Blake Midget, and he goes, Come on, man. That's my life. <laughs> if this whole uh, doing stand up to you fucks doesn't work out, <laughs> I'm, gonna, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna write sequels to movies. And I've already started one. Uh, it's the sequel to the movie The Number 23. And uh, I've tentatively titled it, The Word Awful. <laughs> yeah, and if I can't sell that one, I'm also working on a sequel to Race to Witch Mountain called Puke Race to Witch Mountain. <laughs> and then that one, The Rock's just gonna throw up a lot. Except in a hurry, because it's a race. <laughs> um, I, uh... I weighed tables and I was I was working yesterday and it was busy as shit and uh, like my last table of the night left me a fucking terrible tip and it was really annoying because their kid had just graduated from U of R so I know they had money and I was really fucking pissed off about it and then I go to like clear off the table and sitting on the table is this receipt. <laughs> For those of you who can't see it, it's uh, a receipt for the down payment on a brand new Hummer from that fucking kid who just graduated for U of R. They had enough money to buy their 22-year-old kid a brand new Hummer, but not to tip me 10%. But what they didn't realize was that in the top left corner was their home address. <laughs> so, Jake Skivington at 206 Sibley Road in Honey Eye Falls, New York, You've just gotten yourself a free subscription to What's My Dick Doing Today? <laughs> it lasts for a month and includes such thing as Dick Tries a Water Slide, Dick Eats a Choco Taco, or Dick... <laughs> Dick is a Tree Frog. <laughs> There's a guy on the floor laughing. That rules. Uh, this is a uh, this is a letter that I wrote to Book Magazine. Dear Book Magazine, well. Which is it? <laughs> Sincerely, Joe Hafke. Uh, growing up, I, uh, yeah, growing up, I was, uh, I was raped Catholic. Shit. <laughs> I meant Protestant. <laughs> uh, I saw this uh, window sticker recently, and uh, it was on a Jeep Wrangler, and uh, the sticker read, uh, get in, sit down, hold on, shut up. Yeah, catchy window slogan, or the mutterings of a lunatic. Get in, sit down, shut up, hang on, hold on, shut up, get in, sit down, hang on, shut up, hold on, sit down, get in, hang on, shut up, hold on, sit down, get in, shut up, hang on, sit down, get in, hold on, shut up, hang on, sit down, shut up, get in, hang on, sit down, hang on, shut up, get in, sit down, shut up, hang on, sit down, get in, shut up, hang on, shut up, get in, sit down, hang on, shut up, get in, hang on, shut up, sit down, hold on. What's even better about that is the extended version of the sticker <laughs> on the Jeep Wrangler that reads, uh, Get in! Sit down! Recline your seat! 
Inject the Incubus CD. Insert Dave Matthews Band CD. Date rape. Hold on. Shut up. All right, I'm gonna do a character uh, because Corey, you know, called me out. Uh, so, if you guys could help me welcome to the stage Mr. Harvey Carey, the 1950s comedian. Thank you, thank you, it's wonderful to be here. Wonderful to be here, look at your smiling faces. Give it up for your smiling faces, everybody. Yeah, good to be here, good to be here. So I was with a girl the other day. I was trying to figure out what to do. So I took out a coin and I flipped it in the air. Looks like head. hey -o. I remember a lot of things from even before I was a kid. Like this one time, I remember I went to the park with my dad and I came home with my mother. That one's about seminal fluids. Come on. Good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So my wife, she's washing clothes the other day on a washboard. A washboard. And I was like, shut up! Just shut the fuck up! Thank you. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. Hey, I'm gonna get out of here on this one. My little son, he's got the eyes of the milkman. But he's lactose intolerant. Take that, you little son of a bitch. Hey, you guys have been wonderful. Thanks for a great, uh, what anniversary is it? A year? Uh -oh. We're gonna keep things going. This next guy will be at the. Really? Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, noise. All right, good. Um, Blake. Somebody's talking to you. What? Do you guys want to talk to Blake? What the fuck is going on? All right. But what just happened? What is this? Uh. Anyways, getting back to the show. This so next guy will be at the DC Improv on, uh, what is it, May 12th? May 12th? June 12th. June 12th. This guy will be at the DC Improv. Everybody, give it up. Very funny guy, Mr. Bill Metzger. Oh! Thank you for that wonderful intro that I told you to say. <laughs> awesome! Hey, guys. How are you doing? Hey, Internet. How are you? Is this going on the Internet? Sweet, man. I like the internets. Um, you guys on Facebook? Yeah! Don't you hate it when your mom friends you on Facebook, right? Is that right? You call her a twat? <laughs> She's like, not at the dinner table. You're like, it's just Kentucky Fried Chicken in a bucket. It's not even dinner. You didn't do anything. She's like, wait till your father gets home. And you're like, dad's dead, mom. He's dead. He's not coming back. Just stop it. Yeah, I hate that too. It's so true. Is your, is your mom dead? What if his mom was dead? How awesome would my son be? Did you guys call your moms on Mother's Day? No? No? no. no one? I did. I called my mommy. I called my mom and uh, <laughs> I told her that I had a new girlfriend and she said, first thing out of her mouth was, Make sure you have safe sex. And I was like, what do you mean, like, in a good part of town? Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Richmond that well, so. <laughs> I'm gonna have to be like, hey, how expensive are these houses around here? Because that's how I chose to start off my set. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> my mom, uh, she, I'm on Twitter, uh, and my mom started following me on Twitter and immediately stopped, because <laughs> the <fr> <laughs> The first Twitter I sent when she started following me was a pickup line I came up with, and uh, it goes like this. Hey baby, want to crash your mouth plane into my cock tower? <laughs> 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 and my mom was like, no, I wouldn't. 
this. Let's do some crowd work. This guy knows what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. All right, that's good. Um, this is this is probably gonna be stupid, but I was thinking about. Coco the monkey the other day? <laughs> Why aren't we hearing about this monkey like every single day? Like we could talk to a monkey and no one cares. Like I know she just wants a blanket, but like we're talking to animals. Did you know this? I, I researched this because I'm fucking don't work a lot. On the internet. Listen to this shit. Coco the monkey? <laughs> was sued for sexual assault. Did you know that? Did you know this? She really likes breasts. And so, like, when they would bring in new volunteers, um, they would, like, Coco the monkey would be left alone with them. And Coco the monkey would just be like, all right, I need to see your breasts now. Like, let's, let's do this. It's like, I need to, I'm gonna pinch your nipples right now. No one's gonna believe you, I'm a gorilla. <laughs> I need to, I'm gonna pinch your, that's, that's a rock solid argument. Guys, I didn't actually write that joke before I told it. <laughs> I need to sit down. Oh, God. What's up, dude? What's up, man? You ever jerk off into a laser? <laughs> no, dude, into a laser. <laughs> Please, do tell. Were you just like playing with your cats one day and you're like, wait a second? <laughs> Cats like lasers. I don't know. I worked at Chili's once, um, and uh, I I would I got fired from Chili's. Uh, I'm not gonna go into why I got fired, uh, but I would goof off all the time. That's part of it. And one day, I answered the phone because someone was calling in like a to-go order, and. Uh, <laughs> I answered the phone in like a gay list. I was like, hey, thanks for calling Chili's. Would you like some food? We have some delicious yum yums. Here's some yummy yum yums for you. <laughs> and I, I expected the person to know exactly what they wanted. I expected them to be like, yes, I'd like a grilled cheese for my kid and some ribs for myself and a hamburger for my wife. But they just asked me all kinds of questions about the menu. So I had to sit there and be like, oh, the, rib, the barbecue sauce is a little spicy. <laughs> like I had to just keep going. And eventually, eventually I was like, fuck it. And by the end of the conversation, I was like, yeah, okay, your total's gonna be 13. <laughs> they never said anything at all, like the whole time. It felt really weird. I was a, uh, I was a firefighter for a while. That shit was fun. Um, <laughs> there was a... <laughs> Shut up. Stop it. Stop it. And stop washing your hands. I didn't know you were a firefighter, dude. Yes, you did, dude. I've already told you I'm a firefighter. Way to be a good friend. Um, so, uh, anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, there was a house that burned down, right? And, um... The, the firefighters went to the house, it was a wreck, and they salvaged some shit from it. And the only thing they were able to sal salvage were two dildos and a samurai sword. I, I'm, I'm, I like that someone, at least one person in the house, is like, thank God they got my dildos and my samurai sword. What would my Wednesday night be without that shit? to be in like a fireproof box, right? Like they have to be like, these are so special that I must reject them. <laughs> I want to uh, I want to start a, a yoga class for kids. I mean, you know, a little yoga class for little kids. And uh, I think I'm gonna call it, hey check out these faggots. <laughs> before you can ask someone why they're wearing an eye patch. I wait till after I come. That's just me. Because it could be a deal breaker. I don't know how. Maybe they took it out themselves. Oh, you didn't tell me that part of it. You know how they uh, age pictures? Like someone will go missing and they'll, they'll age pictures so that you can see what the kid looks like today, like 10 years later. 
I wonder if the parents like ever see that shit and they're like, oh wow, uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think that two pedophiles have, have like have ever met each other in a park? Like just online chatting and they get to the park bench and they're like, holy shit, I thought you were 12! Dude, I thought you were 12! You were so good! <laughs> Teach me! I got uh, I got kicked out of PetSmart the other day. Um, those fucking people. They're so hypocritical. I took a shit on the floor, but still, I mean... <laughs> no? Okay. Never again? Never forget that joke. That was a slight 9-11 reference. Check this out! You're gonna hate this fucking shitty joke. <laughs> I, want, I want to write a screenplay called Groundhog Day 2, Escape from 9-11. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get off stage soon. I'm just like, doing rambling and shit. Um, I uh, I realized. Um, first, I'd like to say, try this out. This is fun as shit. Around Christmas time, go to the mall dressed as Santa and just wait in line for Santa. <laughs> you will make kids fucking cry. Like, they never cry. <laughs> Um, are, are there any feminists in the room? Woo! Get ready not to like me! Yay! <laughs> uh, I realized yesterday uh, I got in an argument with a feminist and I found out that a really improper way to end an argument with a feminist is like this. <laughs> That's not logical. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Um, and I'm going to end on this gem. <laughs> Why did the feminists cross the road? Why? Just suck on my dick! <laughs> Alright, thanks guys. This is fun. Extra. Very funny, very funny stuff. DC Improv, June 12th. <laughs> All right. We won't be doing any of that shit, so don't worry about that. None of it. None of it. It's, uh... Yeah, all right. They're just He's going to do that with Joe. He's going to do that Just shake hands for 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. Uh, this next guy hosts a room at Bottoms Up Pizza. It's called the 955 Comedy Show. Uh, everyone give it up for Mr. Ray Bullock. Shoot, shit, Jesus Christ, I'm a cracker. If there was a bomb that was going to hit this building, every fucking hipster in Virginia would be dead. It's wonderful. <laughs> Holy shit, no more PBO would be left. It's going to be great. Holy, give it up for Joe. Seriously, man, one year. One year here, man. I've been coming here to an open mic for one year, man. If this room was a woman I was dating, she would be fucking my best friend right now. That's what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, to the feminists earlier, remember, behind every misogynistic man is a woman sucking the cock of his brother. Anyway, this is the show, ladies and gentlemen. This is the show. Holy sheep shit, Jesus. You are stoned out of your fucking mind right now, dude, aren't you? Look at you. You look like you should be on an island wearing a loincloth. What the fuck? All right, moving on. I'm just me rambling now. Oh, who's dating? Bunch of single fucking people. <laughs> Be careful, man. We're in Richmond, Virginia. By the way, a little factoid about Richmond, Virginia. This is my home. A little factoid about Richmond. We are number one in sexually transmitted diseases in the nation, ladies and gentlemen. Yes! Number one. That's right. We came in silver. In, uh, we got a silver medal in the Civil War, but goddammit, we're coming back with chlamydia. That's what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, they actually say in Richmond, Virginia, one in three people have a sexually transmitted disease. One in three. So do me a favor. Look to your left. Look to your right. If they seem clean, guess who the whore is? Just putting it out there for you. 
that's why I gotta kind of stop dating in Richmond, man. I gotta find somebody. I gotta find like a woman or someone who won't press charges. One of those things has to happen. Uh, no, but it's rough, man, because when you start dating, you start to get to that point where you're like, you know, you have to tell me what you want to do in bed and shit like that, and that's always awkward because that's usually when my relationship ends. It's bad, man. She like, you know, talk to me. What do you want to do? I can't tell you what I want to do in bed because either one or two things is gonna happen. If I tell you what I would like for you to do while we're having sex, one of these two things will happen. One, you're gonna run out of my apartment naked, crying like I played professional football. Or two, you're going to do it. And if you do do it, there's a good chance neither one of us will want to see the other person ever again. <laughs> it'll be it'll be horrible, man. She's just over there. Tell me what you want to do. All right, bitch, you asked for it. Here we go. I want you to mount on top of me. I want you to spread peanut butter and jelly all over your tits. I want you to ride my cock and then choke me. Choke me like no fucking end. With your free hand, punch the shit out of me. And spit on me, call me dirty names, call me a filthy bastard. Then I'm going to take this hand and, how can I say this politely, turn you into a live-action Muppet. <laughs> After that is over, I'm going to make your face look like a hot and freshly glazed Krispy Kreme donut. That's right, there's going to be one dozen of them. It's going to be beautiful. And as you're crying, looking up at me, I want you to say, I love you so much. Daddy. So you don't want me to say these things. You don't want truth in your relationship. You want me to lie to you. You want me to say, no, no, your sister's not uglier than you are. It's true. <laughs> you want lies, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm saying. Holy sheep shit. Alrighty. Who's doing drugs tonight? Drug takers? Fantastic. I started smoking weed again. I'm happy about that. I stopped for a long time, I started smoking weed again, not because I wanted to get high, because I wanted to find some deep understanding to Tim and Eric awesome show Good Dob on Adult Swim. I watched that shit sober, I'm like, this is dumb. I smoked a joint, that shit should be right up there with Citizen Kane. It is that fucking magnificent. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. And after that, there's a piece of meat and some fries. It's wonderful. Oh. But I had to stop doing drugs. I stopped for a while because, you know, college isn't for everybody. Uh, I, like, it's weird, man, doing the whole drug thing and all that because I started when I was young. How many people started, uh, like, some type of drug when they were in their teens? Like, you know, 15, 14, 9, you know, one of those? Am I the only one? <laughs> Just you, at 9. Fantastic. Wonderful. <laughs> The only person going down the playground at McDonald's offering you a hit of acid once you get out of the ball pit. And you, we need a fucking party, you and I. Now, I, I blame my school. I blame fifth grade. And I'll tell you why I blame fifth grade. The D.A.R.E. program. Did anybody else go to the D.A.R.E. program? What a crock of horse shit this was. First and foremost, I want to find the officer who taught the D.A.R.E. program. And I want to be, dude, where are my flashbacks you said I would get? I have been waiting 15 years for an acid flashback. Apparently I got some bad shit because I've never gotten one. <laughs> oh, bad stuff, bad stuff. No, but the D.A.R.E. program. This is where a cop came to your school and told you don't do drugs. You tell someone not to do drugs, they're instantly going to do it. You tell anybody not to do anything, that's what they're going to want to do. You don't believe me? Don't think about your grandparents fucking. <laughs> See, I win. <laughs> no, you tell kids not to do something, they said, hey, don't do this. And we took it as a challenge. A mm, dare, if you will. And I smoked every fucking thing I could get my hands on. You know you have a problem with weed when you and your best friend Dave Thomas are in your basement cracking open tea bags that your mother makes iced tea with, shoving them in an aluminum pipe that you made out of some tin foil, saying, dude, I heard this kid get really high off of this shit. And then he went off to create Tim and Eric Awesome Show Good Job. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to leave here real quickly, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed your time with me. I know I've enjoyed my time with you. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about one thing. A comic mentioned this earlier. They were talking about the first thing that they masturbated to was the salt and pepper. Who was who, that? Oh, oh, yeah. See, the first thing I masturbated to wasn't like a music video. It was the Flintstones. Who's with me in that? <laughs> Betty Rubble was the hottest piece of ass I had ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh, yeah, she had that little skirt. You didn't even have to take it off. You just had to bend her over because her ass... Oh, yeah, I was ready to rock and roll. I'm there after third grade like, oh, you dirty slut, Betty. That's right. <laughs> Wilma might have the pearl necklace, but you're getting one today. Anyway. But then the saddest day in my life came when they made that movie, the live-action Flintstones movie. 
because this was the woman that I learned to stroke it to. And who did they get to play my childhood icon? Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> I'm in that movie theater with my pants around my ankles just waiting like, oh, this is going to be... Oh, God, I can't... Maybe. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been drinking, let somebody else drive. You plan on doing other things tonight. Don't fuck up. Fuck safe. See you next time. Bye-bye. Very bullish, everyone. Very That was great.